Chapter 2 Hiding? I startle at my brother's voice. Zine's knowing smile makes the denial I was about to give die on my lips. Instead, I shrug. Things have been kind of crazy today. I just needed a few minutes to catch my breath. Guitars, drums, and several horns play music in front of the bakery while dozens of people dance and clap their hands to the beat. On the other side of the square, roasted meats continue to be sliced and carved. A combination of torchlight and electricity illuminates the rest of the square, where people laugh, sing, and play games. But the light doesn't reach me in the shadows where I stand. For the past few hours, I've been dancing and singing because it's expected. To do anything less would be to show my disappointment, which would also reveal my arrogance in thinking I was smart enough to be chosen. Here. Zine hands me a cup with an understanding nod. You could use this. The drink is sweet, but underneath there is a distinct flavor of something sharp and bitter. Alcohol. Since most fruits and grains that can be turned into alcohol are needed to feed Five Lakes Colony citizens, very little of the crop is turned into liquor. But a small amount is set aside every year for special occasions, like graduation night. Only adults are allowed to consume the special drinks, but my brothers have allowed me to sip from their cups in the past. The flavor isn't to my liking, so I only take a quick sip and pass the cup back to Zine. Feel better, kiddo? I look down to avoid his eyes. Not exactly. Yeah. He leans back against a large oak tree and drains the rest of the liquid from the cup. Things don't always work out the way we hope. You just have to pick yourself up and find a new direction to go in. The edge in his, to his voice makes me ask, Is that what you're going to do then? In the past couple of years, Zine had toyed with seeing what opportunities existed outside Five Lakes. I would hate it if he did it now. Having him leave our colony would be sad. Knowing he'd be leaving mad would break my heart. His hand tightens around the cup, but his words are mild when he answers. I'm not sending an application to Tosu City, if that's what you mean. The magistrate asked Dad to change his announcement today, so he did. You know me. I'll be pissed for a few days, and then I'll get over it. He shrugs, and his eyes shift toward the party in the square. It's getting late. While some will dance and sing until morning, many are already starting to make the journey home. Graduation day is coming to an end. After several minutes, Zine says, You could do it, you know. Do what? Talk to the magistrate, send an application to Tosu City. The thought is both terrifying and tempting. Any colonist were interested in working in Tosu City or another colony can fill out an application and file it with the magistrate's office. The United Commonwealth Government will then contact the applicant with an appropriate job assignment, assignment if one is available. In my 16 years, I've known of only two applicants who were contacted and offered positions. After the disappointment of today, I'm not sure I'm ready to face another. My uncertainty must show on my face because Zine throws his arm around my shoulders and gives me a quick hug. Don't worry, kiddo. You have lots of time to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Too bad mom doesn't agree. We all sleep late the next morning, but I've barely had a chance to get dressed before my mother says, If you are determined not to work with your father, Kip Dreisten has an opening on his team. You should talk to him before one of the other graduates takes a position. Kip Dreisten's team repairs farming equipment. While I like working with mechanical things, the idea of repairing broken down tractors for the rest of my life is depressing. I'll think about it, I say. My mother's frown speaks volumes, which is why I find myself climbing on my bicycle and riding slowly toward town in search of Mr. Dreisten. The Drystons live in a small, pretty cottage on the other side of the colony. Knocking on the front door, I swallow hard. I can't help the swell of relief I feel when Mr. Dreisten's wife tells me that Kip left early this morning for the Endress farm. He isn't expected back for several days. I've been granted a reprieve. The day after graduation is a day of rest. Most businesses are closed. Families stay home to hold more private celebrations. My mother is planning a large meal later and even has invited a few of my friends over to share. 
I should probably go home and help with the preparations. Instead, I get off my bicycle when I reach the town square. I lean my bicycle against a tree and sit next to the fountain. One or two citizens wave, but they are busy and don't stop to talk, which I prefer. Resting my head on my hands, I watch the water gurgle in the fountain and try to ignore the hollowness that has taken root since yesterday's ceremony. I am an adult. Ever since I was little, I watched my parents and the other adults and wished for the day I would be one of them, confident and strong. Never have I felt so unsure of myself. The clock above the magistrate's house gongs. Three o'clock. Time to get home before my mother starts to worry. I'm over halfway there when I spot my brother Hart speeding down the dirt path toward me. Crap, if Mum sent him to find me, I'm really in trouble. But it isn't my mother looking for me. Magistrate Owens, send a pulse radio message to Dad just after you left the house. You're supposed to report to her house at four o'clock to talk about your future plans. When you didn't come home right away, Mum sent us all out to look for you. Hart gives me a, ricket, a wicked grin. You better hurry if you're going to make it. He's right. By the time I arrive back in the square, sweat is dripping down my face, my hair is a wreck, and my stomach is tied in knots. While my father and brothers have had occasion to be summoned to the magistrate's house to talk about their various projects, this is a first for me. My future plans? I can't help but wonder if this summons was prompted by my mother's concern. Did she contact Magistrate Owens and enlist her help? Or... Has my lack of a career path been obvious to others? The idea that my disappointment has been noticed by those outside my family makes my stomach royal with shame. Preparing for a lecture, I run my hands through my hair and straighten my white short-sleeved tunic and gray pants before knocking on the magistrate's fr front door. Good, he made it. Magistrate Owens gives me a smile that doesn't quite reach her eyes. Please come in, Sia. Everyone else is already here. Everyone else? Magistrate Owens leads me into a large carpeted sitting room and four faces turn to look at me. The three people who are seated are familiar. Gray-eyed, handsome Thomas Endress. Shy but sweet Malachi Rourke. Beautiful, artistic Zandri Hicks. They are fellow graduates, people I have known almost my entire life. The other is not. Thomas motions for me to take a seat next to him and gives me a dimpled smile that makes it impossible not to smile in return. Magistrate Owens crosses the room and stands next to the stranger and says, Thank you all for coming on such short notice. I apologize for pulling you away from your family celebrations, but it was unavoidable. Her eyes sweep the room, looking at each one of us. This is Tosu City official Michel Gallen. He intended on arriving yesterday for graduation, but was unavoidably delayed due to a mechanical problem. Tosu City. My heart tilts as Tosu City official Gallon takes a step forward and pulls a folded piece of paper from his pocket. He's older than us, but not by much. Around Zine's age, with shaggy brown hair and a lanky awkwardness that belies the authority he must bring with him from Tosu. His dark eyes are serious as he looks down at the paper and reads, Every year, the United Commonwealth reviews the achievements of the graduates in all 18 colonies. The top students from that pool of graduates are brought to Tosu City for testing to attend the university. Being chosen is an honor. The graduates of the university are our great hope, the ones we are all counting on to help regenerate the earth and improve our quality of life. They are the future scientists, doctors, teachers, and government officials. The paper lowers, and he gives us a smile. You four have been selected to participate in the testing. A wave of excitement washes over me. I look around to see if I have heard correctly. Thomas's face is lit with a smile. He is the smartest in our class, so it is no wonder he has been chosen. According to this Tosu City official, I have too. Four of us have. This is real. I won't have to work with tractors. I have been chosen for the testing. I did it. You will leave for the testing tomorrow. The glow of happiness fades as the reality of the Tosu City official's words slam into my chest. We leave tomorrow. Why tomorrow? 
Magistrate Owens asked. I remember there being more time in between selection and the testing. Things have changed since your colony last had a testing candidate, the Tosu City official answers. His voice is deep with a hint of impatience. The candidates will begin the testing process this week. I think you'll agree they stand a better chance of passing it if they arrive on time. What if we don't want to go? We all turn to look at Zandri. Her face is almost the same crimson shade as her tunic. At first, I think it is from embarrassment. Then she lifts her chin. By the way her blue eyes glitter, it's clear she is angry. The fact that four of us were chosen for the testing is astonishing, but Zandri being one of the four is perhaps the bigger surprise. Not that Zandri isn't smart. She is, although many of us would think of her as an artist first and a scholar second. Zandri only excels at science when it helps her create new paints. And while she has never indicated a desire to continue her education, I'm still surprised at her question. Who would turn down the honor of being chosen for the testing? The Tosu City official smiles, and I shiver. It is a smile devoid of warmth. You don't have a choice. The law states that every United Commonwealth citizen chosen must present him or herself for the testing by the appointed date or face punishment. What kind of punishment? Zandri looks to Magistrate Owens, who glances at the Tosu City official. The two lock eyes before Magistrate Owens says, According to the law, not presenting oneself for the testing is a form of treason. And the most common punishment for treason is death. Someone, perhaps Malachi, whispers a protest. My chest feels as though someone has wrapped his arms around me and squeezed tight. All my excitement about being chosen is gone, replaced with an icy fear. Only... There is no reason to fear. I want to be tested. Punishment will not be required for me or for any of my fellow candidates. At the word treason, the fight goes out of Zandri. Seeing our shock, Magistrate Owens explains that the law that governs the punishment for not accepting our place in the testing goes back to the very early days of the United Commonwealth. There were lawless factions that wished to tear apart the new government and tried to convince testing candidates to rebel. There's talk of the law being changed, but these things take time. I feel a bit better knowing that the law hasn't been invoked in decades, and the excitement that had been extinguished begins to resurface as the magistrate discuss discusses the basics we will need to bring with us to Tosu City. Testing candidates are allowed to bring two changes of everyday clothing, two sets of undergarments, one set of night clothes, two pairs of shoes, two personal items, no books, no papers, nothing that might give one candidate an advantage over another. Everything must fit in the bags we will be given when we leave the meeting. We are expected to be in the square tomorrow at first light with our bags. Tosu City official Michelle Gallen will be waiting to escort us to the testing center. She then tells us how proud she is of our achievements and says she is certain we will all be successful in our testing. But I know she's lying. My mother has the same forced, overly bright smile when she's upset. Magistrate Owens does not think we will all pass. Does she worry that our failure will reflect poorly on Five Lakes Colony? I'm still wondering as we're escorted toward the front entrance. Bright sunshine greets us as the door swings open. I'm the last of the four to take a dark brown bag with the red and purple United Commonwealth logo on the front from Magistrate Owens. As I sling the thick strap over my shoulder, I realize the dinner party my mother has painstakingly planned will have to be cut short. Otherwise, I will not have enough time to pack and prepare for whatever tomorrow brings. Zandri is already gone when I step outside, but Thomas and Malachi are waiting. For the moment, the three of us stare at one another, uncertain what to say. I'm not surprised when Thomas is the first to find his voice. With one of his wide, heart-stopping smiles, he looks into my eyes and says, I guess we should go home. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. And I know he's right. It's time to go home and tell my family that tomorrow I will leave the house in the morning and I won't return. <laughs>